So why do we need voting methods? Well, this is our integration of our API with Decidim proposals. And we realize that although we can delegate using our API, that there's a second votable thing called endorsements here. So we have supports and endorsements both related to the same proposal. And at the moment, our API has no way of conceptualizing subcategories of a proposal. If we look at the voting methods table that we've created on our API database, we can see that it has associations with votes, delegations, and results. So a single voting method can have many votes, many results, or many delegations. A vote or a result must be associated with a voting method, and a delegation may be associated with a voting method. And I'll explain that difference as we go through this presentation. Another thing to notice about the voting methods table is that there's a default value for the name, and also there's a unique index against the organization ID and the name. Also, if we take a look at the vote schema, we'll notice that we use the unique constraint in the change set. And this ensures that we indeed only ever create unique voting methods for an organization. So let's go ahead and create our first vote. We won't specify a voting method, but we will return the voting method in a query. And there we are, we've created a vote. We've also got the voting result. And we can see that the voting method is indeed default. And if we go ahead and create a second vote, also for the default voting method, we'll see that we get the correct voting result. This is accomplished using the upset voting method function in the voting methods file. This will ensure that we only ever insert a new voting method once for each organization. And this upset is used in most of the significant actions of this pull request. For example, when we create a vote, one of the first things we do is we upset the voting method. So what if we want to specify a particular voting method? Well, we can just add that for example, in our voting mutation, and let's call it method A. And we'll see that we've created a vote, and we have the correct voting result, and we have the correct voting method name. And again, if we go ahead and create a second vote from a different participant for the same method, we get the correct voting result back. Okay, but what about delegations? So let's reset the database and we'll create one vote for Anna, for method A. And now let's create a delegation from Bob to Anna for the same proposal and the same method. And we'll see that the delegation has been created and indeed the in favor result has been incremented by one because this delegation has added voting weight to Anna's vote. Now let's reset the database again, and we'll look at global delegations. So here we're creating a global delegation, which shouldn't have a proposal or a voting method or a voting result associated with it. And indeed, that is the case. However, the global delegation has been created. Let's just illustrate that by creating a vote for Anna for method A. And we'll see the vote has been created and has an initial result of in favor two. So this shows that the delegation has been taken into account. And if we create a new vote for method B, this is still the case. Because there's a global delegation adding to Anna's voting weight on whatever she votes on. Therefore, we can see global delegation also works using voting methods. And thus, we've implemented what we need. We now have a way of creating multiple votable things per proposal.